tell you, he's a blessing to me. Amen. Stand with me. Take your songbook and turn to page 232. 232, and we'll sing, When I See the Blood. Right for that home. 
Alabama. Amen. How many first time visitors here tonight? Anybody here for the first time? No? Okay, how about we all just stand up, shake hands, and fellowship? Make your way back to your seats. Take your songbooks and turn to 212. 212 will sing nothing but the blood.
approach you. I am the call once again to come together just to give you the praise and worship. Yes. Everything that you deserve. Father, it's good to be back home to be in your church. Father, we just ask you to be with us and bring us your word. Just open up our hearts and our minds so we'll receive what you have for each and every individual here. Father, we also pray if there's anybody here that does not know you as our personal Savior tonight, yes, before they walk out those doors, and Amen. seek out someone and get their assurance taken care of. Father, we ask that you be with us in Christ's name. next door in the fellowship. All Pastor Rowan, everyone's invited. Amen. Amen. Everybody's invited tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tuesday morning, assisted living visitation. That's at 1045 in the morning. And that'll bring us to Wednesday night service. It's Lighthouse Teens and Kids for Christ Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Be in your place. Be faithful to God's house. And that'll bring us to Friday night where we'll form a unanimous class right here in the auditorium at 7 p.m. Everyone's invited. Everyone. Amen. 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 And then Saturday morning, the Shell Factory Flea Market, we go out there and hand out tracks, and that starts at 8.30 until you get done. And then prayer meeting on Saturday evening right here in the auditorium at 8 p.m. for all church members. Amen. 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 There's no such thing as too much prayer. <coughs> and then coming up July the 16th, it's going to be in the evening service. We're going to be having the Lord's Supper. And then coming up on July the 30th in the evening service, we're going to have a cowbell service. Good old-fashioned cowbell. And the men need to see Pastor Owen before then if you want to preach. And what time we need to be here, Karen? Sunday Ten morning. Okay. <laughs> on the dock. <laughs> she don't want y'all to be late for Sunday school. Yeah. Amen. And then y'all need to be here at 11 o'clock for the morning service. 4.30 for the prayer meetings, 5 for choir, and evening service will bring us right back where we are. 6 p.m. on Sunday night. Amen? Amen. Amen? Just be faithful to God's house. Amen? Amen? We just need to keep praying one for another. Pray for our church. Pray for our country. Yep. Amen? Amen? And be faithful. Thank you.
everybody tonight. That was some rain we got a while ago, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. Now what? Praise the Lord. I think somebody ought to just get up and just shout or something, man. Run. Hallelujah. 
John chapter 16. If y'all ain't going to do it, I'll preach. There you go. I'll give you a chance. Oh, Lord, listen to this. I'm an old man. I can't do all that. Thank you, Jesus. I know one thing. I'm sure glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad one day God reached down and yes, sir. picked me up out of that horrible pit. You know, how many of you mamas remember when you had that first child and you went up there and grabbed that young and hugged it and you just felt the love of Christ there mm -hmm. and the love in your heart for that child? Yes. Yeah. You remember when you met your husband or you met your wife and you go up there and you, she'd give you a big old hug or you'd give, he'd give you a big old hug and that feeling of love you had come over yeah. you? Just think what it's like yes. when God gives you a hug. <laughs> if you think about that a little bit, I guarantee you somebody would praise God here. John chapter 16, verse 33, just one verse. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. I like that. Yeah. And in Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Yes. I mean, if God be for us, who can be against us? Yes. You know, a lot of people think when they get saved, everything's going to be all right. Wake up and smell the roses, honey. That ain't right. Things, the Bible says, yea, all those that live godly. live godly will suffer persecution. And that's in this world. Yeah. And you start thinking about all the stuff we go. You ever had somebody go up there and, and start talking bad about you or do this or yeah. do that? Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Especially the children of God. But, I, you know, the best thing to do is just kind of shrug it off and just go on because God can handle that. Yes. And God will handle that because, see, we're his children and he will take care of his children. I want to preach a message tonight, if you want to put a title to it, on what to expect in the future if you're saved. What to expect in the future if you're saved. Amen. You know, one of the main problems with new Christians is the unexpected problems, the tests, the persecution, the trials that are encountered just after they get saved. That's why a lot of them don't stick around. And the problem I see is not with them, it's with us. Amen. We need to disciple those newborn children. We need to mentor them. We need to pray for them. We need to encourage them to the best of our ability. Because the devil out there as a roaring lion roameth about seeking whom he may devour. You know, you can expect the Savior's presence in the future. It says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. See, we can experience the presence of God in our lives. You know, in the time of sickness and sorrow, we can experience the presence of God in our lives. In the time of health and happiness, we can experience the presence of God in our lives. You know, in the time of prosperity and poverty, we can experience the presence of God. Yes. Amen. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Great God. Thank I you like Jesus. that. Amen. We can expect Amen. the Savior's presence. There's yes. nothing any better than knowing that he is right there with us. That's right. I mean, you start thinking about, you know, all the stuff we run into in this life. 
all the problems, all the trials, all the testings, whatever it is, He is right there with us. Amen. I like that. Amen. I like that. You can also experience and expect Satan's plot. You can't leave him out. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be sober. That word sober means clear-minded. Yes. Be vigilant. In other words, on guard duty. Why? It says, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, roameth or walketh about seeking whom he may devour. See, he's after us to destroy our testimony. He's trying to destroy our family, our life. He's trying to destroy this church. He's not going to sit back. And you know what? I tell everybody all the time, when it starts getting a little warm around here, you need to be careful because that's when the snakes come out. If it's cold as a popsicle church, you ain't got to worry about the devil fooling with that. He's already got them people. But when it starts getting a little warm and people start getting saved, people start getting the hearts right with God and people start seeking God with their whole heart, guess what? Things will happen. I guarantee you, things Amen. will happen. The old devil, man, he is right there trying to disrupt. The devil's plot is to try to deceive you. And our Bible study tomorrow night is we're going to deal with that. You know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our thought life is what we're dealing with in this series. And you've got to understand that the devil will try to slip you a lie, and that's a deception from the devil himself. And he'll get you at odds with another brother or sister in the Lord. He'll get you at odds with the preacher, which I don't understand how anybody could be at odds with me. Uh, <laughs> But he'll do something, and then you'll believe that lie. I mean, I, I've had people get upset with me because one t I'm not going to mention any names, but there's a couple. They were walking just around the corner of the church there, and I come into the screen room, and because I didn't holler out, Hey, good morning! They got mad at me. Hey, man. Amen. And if you know me, I go out of my way to shake your hand. Everybody in here should have got shook at least once. If you, I didn't shake your hand at least once, you missed out on a blessing. I don't want to tell you. We love you, brother. <laughs> Amen. But you can expect Satan's plot to try to disarm you. Now, how does he disarm you? Well, he gets you out of this book. He gets you off of your knees. He gets you to talking about other brothers and sisters in the Lord. See, your negative talking has an effect. How many big mouth tattletales have we got in here? Y'all raise your hand up, you are. Yeah, you know, the book of Proverbs says, where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceaseth. Right. Where there is no wood, the fire goeth out. Right. Are we all right or what? Amen. Well, Praise the Lord. Praise God. Another thing you can expect is sure persecution. Yeah. It'll happen. I mean, it'll be at work. Whatever. You know, 2 Timothy 3.12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus might suffer persecution. Oh, it doesn't say that? It says, shall, positive, suffer persecution. And see, the people, the Christians in this country have no conception of what persecution is. I mean, you might have somebody look at you funny or say, well, I'm not going to take that track or don't even talk to me about God, speak to the hand or whatever it is, and we get our little feelings hurt so we won't tell nobody else. I'm talking about persecution where they're trying to destroy you. You know, some of these third world countries, man, there's, there's people getting their heads cut off that are Christians. They're being burned alive. 
put them in cages and light them on fire. Now, you, you, see, we're kind of sheltered. And the, the news media, all they want to do is distort the truth and down our president. They're on a quest. Anything that is corrupt, anything that is uh, contrary to the Word of God or God Himself, that's what they're for. You can expect that persecution. You're either in the midst of a storm, you're either just getting out of a storm, or you're just getting ready to go into a storm. You know, I, I've, I've learned that, you know, I've, over the years, especially in the ministry, there's things that come up and it just, you know, people get disgruntled and they get mad and, you know, it, it bothers me. I, it doesn't bother me quite as bad as it used to, but it still bothers me. I mean, it not, I'm not saying it doesn't bother me. It does. But I've learned to just give the problems to him. Amen. Because if I try to carry them, it'll destroy me. Yes. And I, I mean, I've been to the point where I've just been in despair. I've been to the point where I just felt like throwing my hands up and say, what's the use? But see, there's something inside of me that won't let me quit. Amen. 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 If there's a preacher around that can quit, he ain't a preacher. That's all I got to say. I know. Are you, how many of y'all are wondering when, when the retirement age is for a preacher? I, don't, I can't see that in the Bible. I'm going to be preaching until I can't preach no more. And I'm praying that if either the shout comes or God takes me preaching, I'd love to have the big one just running down that aisle. And don't resuscitate me. <laughs> but you know, you can expect that persecution. You can also expect in the future to be secure by prayer. Amen. You're having problems, you're having troubles, you're having thoughts that are not what they ought to be. You need to be alone with God in your prayer closet right. and just seeking His face and he'll give you the security that you need in your heart, that peace of God that passeth all understanding. Amen. And I know I've had people, you know, they've, they've left the church and all this stuff here, and I said, well, uh, they won't come to me. You know, everybody that leaves church, they don't never come to me and say, well, preacher, I'm leaving. This is, this is why I'm leaving a chapter and verse here. It's either something they've pulled up off the internet. I've had that happen before. Or I looked at them funny. I've had that happen before too. Honey, I want to let you know I'll look you right in your God given eyeballs, man. Man, I like, you know, I you know, the Bible says the the light of the body the eyes are the light of the body. That's the soul. Your eyes go right straight to your soul. I can tell what somebody is with God by looking at them. And every time I say that, I got everybody just. <laughs> now that I got your attention, I need to take an offering up. <laughs> but you know, you start thinking about the the security that we have in prayer. There's nothing any sweeter. Amen. Nothing any sweeter than just getting alone with God Amen. and let the Spirit yeah. of God have free Amen. reign in your soul. And you might not even know what to say, but the Spirit makes intercession with groanings yes. that we can't even utter. I've been so in the depths of despair before I've got out and just went, oh, oh, Lord, I don't know what to do. And the Holy Spirit of God takes over. Amen. 
We have power. We have power in prayer. God hears our prayer. And when we pray in accordance to this book, He not only hears us, but He answers us. I mean, I've, I've seen some mighty big prayers being answered. And I'm sure y'all have too. You've been saved at all. But you know, it says in uh, Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, Call unto me, and I'll show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I started, you know, I saw that verse years ago. And I, got, I looked at that thing, and I'd never seen it before. And I had some uh, preacher show it to me, and he was, he was going through a trial. And he said, I'm claiming this verse. And I said, well, okay, let me see. And I turned to my Bible, seen that thing, and I read that. And I said, it says, call unto me. Now, who's that speaking? That's God. Call unto me, and who's going to answer? I will answer. God's going to answer. And he says, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I mean, you hadn't even thought about it. And they're great and mighty, and he's going to show them to us. Bam, like that, man. I like that. Prayer will keep you in tune with the Savior. If you don't have a prayer life, you don't have a Christian life. Prayer will keep you in touch with the Spirit. See, the Spirit makes intercession for us. The Spirit guides us into all truth. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And prayer will keep you out of trouble with sin. You start praying and I guarantee you, you ain't going to sin. I'm not, I'm not talking about one of those run over the cat type sins. You know, you're driving along, a cat runs out in front of you, and all of a sudden, bap, bap, you sin. I'm talking about a premeditated, I can't wait till this weekend, I'm going to go do something bad type of sin. How many of you ever have them thoughts? Boy, I tell you what, when I was younger, boy, I tell you what, I couldn't wait till Friday. And I usually didn't. I started Wednesday. Yeah, I could start Monday, too. Matter of fact, I never stopped until God got a hold of me. And when God got a hold of me, he pulled the plug. And then he, that's from the, this world, and he took that plug and he plugged me into heaven. Amen. And I ain't been the same since. Amen. You can expect when we get ourselves where it needs to be in prayer, you can expect God's blessings on your life. You can expect the Holy Spirit's power in your life. Over in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says, But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come unto you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. We can expect the Holy Spirit's power to lead us and to empower us to be a witness for Amen. Jesus. He will enable you to perform the task that God requires. If God ever calls you to do something, He empowers you to do it. He will also enlighten you at the time that He requests you to do it. You'll be up there, and I, I, I've talked to preachers, and I, you know, I've got up here before and just not even settled at all on what I want to preach. Nothing. That's why when I get up here a lot of times, I say, anybody got a testimony for the Lord? Because I have no idea what to preach. I'm just waiting on the Lord. 
Not that I don't study. I study, and I've got, I've got, I've got probably 15 or 20 messages already here sitting in my Bible ready to preach. Sometimes I preach them, sometimes I don't. I've had some for 10 or 15 years I've never preached. But when God gives you the nudge, he gives you the ability to follow through with what he requires you to do. And he does that through the Holy Spirit. He'll encourage you at the time that he requires that to happen. And see, God's timing is perfect. God is, everything he does is perfect. You can expect help from saved people in the future. I tell you what, it's nothing. It's out there in the world, man. It's a dog eat dog world. But in the church, if you've got a good Bible preaching, Bible teaching church, Amen. other children of God will help you if you get in a problem. Right. I guarantee you, Amen. they'll help you to understand the scriptures. For one thing, see the understanding of the Word of God will let you know why you're going through this and how to get through it, where the power is. They'll also help you to undertake Christian service. I mean, you, you might, God might be burdening on to you to do something and you don't know how to do it and somebody will come up and say, well, let me help you. I know I was talking to Tim and he was saying, you know, he took over the uh, children's church there on Sunday morning and Jenny come up there and says, I want to help you. He says, she's a blessing in there. He says, I'm an old softy, an old man, but she gets their attention real quick. Reminds me, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing else. My wife might be watching. I love you, honey. The Holy Spirit of God helps us in this life that we live. And it uses, it deals with other saved people that have the same Holy Spirit that we've got. Saved people will help you undergo sorrow. See, we can get right down there and hurt with you. We can get right there and be happy with you through the Holy Spirit of God. You can expect in the future, you can expect the return of Christ as promised. There in Hebrews 10, 37, it says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. When it, you know, he's coming back for us. And when the time comes, he's not going to tarry. He's going to come back and he's going to get his children. He's going to take us out of this place and forevermore we're going to be with the Lord. You can expect to be in the rapture if you're saved. That's future. You can expect to face the tribulation if you're not saved. That won't be bad. You can expect forgiveness if you'll trust Jesus Christ yes. as your Savior. Yes. You know, you start thinking all the things that God has for us, and he had all of this figured out before the foundation of this world. He knew, it, he knew the number of the hair on your head before the foundation of this world. That's amazing. But see, that's God. See, we have an amazing God. Amen. You know, it's like Jesus when he went up there and he started talking to those uh, religious people. And he, he confounded them. And the Bible says that the men marveled at what he was saying. Why? Because he was talking with the wisdom and the knowledge of God to them. And they, it just kind of set them back. That's like when he's just a little kid. Went up there and he confounded all the religious leaders in the temple. He said, how in the world can a youngin' like this know as much as he knows? 
That was God incarnate in flesh. What do you expect? But you know, there's some things we can expect in the future. Some of them, I think, to deal with this world is not so joyful. But everything to do with the child of God, we got, man, you know what's got ahead, you know what we got ahead of us? is heaven. I mean, we got heaven waiting on us. We got something that's so marvelous and so fantastic and so great. That Paul said, I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Amen. him. Amen. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking for some of them things. Yeah. Yeah. I want to experience that. Amen. Some of you say, well, preacher, I don't want to be on the first bus load. I don't care. I don't like to be into the end of the line anyhow, so I'm ready to go first. I hate being late. You know, some of y'all might be late for the rapture. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you could do that. I, I, I can't. If, if I'm 10 minutes late being 15 minutes early for church, I'm late. Right. Right. I can't stand that. Yeah. I like to be here before everything happens. I like to be right there in the beginning, right there stirring everything up. Amen. And I tell you what, there's what you know. Brother Tim and I was listening to part of a message into my office. Old C.T. Townsend was preaching on about the woman at the well. Yeah. And I got to thinking about that. You know, the Lord just kind of popped some things in my mind as I was listening to that. And, you know, he told his disciples, he said, I must needs go through Samaria. Now, see, Samaria, the Jews, they, went, they would go 15 miles out of the way not to go through Samaria because they considered the Samaritans, they were, that was part Jew and part Gentile, they considered them like dogs, man. They didn't want any association with them at all. But then Jesus told his disciples, he said, look, boys, he said, I've got to go through Samaria. I must needs go there. So he got into Samaria there and got to this well there and he sat down on it and he told his disciples, he said, boys, I said, y'all go on and get us some groceries in the, in the town there. He said, I'm going to sit here for a while. He knew what he was doing. Amen. And then that woman of Samaria came up there. It was the hot of the day because they wouldn't go there any other time because the Jews wouldn't let them. And she come up there, and Jesus looked at her, and he says, uh, give me water to drink. And that woman looked at him and says, you, you mean you're asking me, a Samaritan, to give you water? And he said, yeah. And he says, well, let me tell you this. If you'll drink of the water that I'm going to give you, Amen. you'll never thirst again. Amen. That's a soul satisfying water. But the water that you're going to get on that bucket and that rope you're going to put down in that well, you drink that and you're going to thirst again. And then he told her all the things that she had done, basically named her sin one by one. And she got so excited, man, about what was going on and who she was talking to. She said, man, he says, well, where do you think you ought to worship? You know, the Jews say you need to worship here in Jerusalem, and, and us Americans say we need to worship in the mountains. And Jesus said, look, God is a spirit, and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And she got so excited, she left her water pot right there and went back home. That was an important thing for them people. She left it. And then she went and told everybody, man, I met a man that told me everything I ever done. And man, I tell you what, they come back and they started talking to the one that told her everything he had done. And glory, hallelujah, they said, look, man, we want to hear some more of you. Why don't you stay here for, with us for a little while? Why don't you abide here with us? Amen. And Jesus said, look, now I've got to go. But they constrained him. So he said, okay. So he abode there two days. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years, 
and a thousand years as one day. From Adam and Eve up until Jesus Christ came on the scene was 4,000 years. From the cross of Calvary up until right now almost is 2,000. One day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. And over there in the book of Hosea it says that after those two days he's going to go back to his people, the Jews. Right now, he's with the Gentiles or anybody that will receive him into their heart and their life. That's Jew and Gentile. And he's aboding here for two days. And honey, this two days is almost over. And glory, hallelujah, we're getting ready to go out of here, church. We're getting ready to leave. I don't, you better start waving bye-bye to your kinfolks that ain't saved because you're leaving, honey. We can expect some man fantastic stuff in the future. Yes. You know, the, nobody knows what the future holds. But you know, when you're saved, you can put out of this book, you can almost put what's going to happen Amen. down on a piece of paper, Amen. and it'll happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, but see, there's not one prophecy that needs to be fulfilled for the rapture of the church to take place. Not one. We're good to go. I hope you are. Praise the Lord. We saw two get in the family this morning. I like that. Saw one Wednesday night, didn't we? Saw another one last Sunday morning. I like seeing getting people, get, getting born into the family of God, man. Man, I tell you what, the family needs to be bigger. I like big families, don't you? Man, the family of God is going to be, we're going to have a shouting time when we get to heaven, man. I tell you what, if you don't shout down here, I guarantee you when you get to glory, you're going to get beside yourself and you're going to say, glory, hallelujah, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad say, God saved my soul. I'm, I'm glad God paid my way to heaven. I got a free ticket going to heaven. I don't know about you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Better than that, my name's written there. Yeah. Them 70 come back after they was casting out them demons and all that junk. They come back rejoicing because the spirits were subject unto them. And Jesus said, boys, don't rejoice because of this. You need to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. It's in the Lamb's book of life. Man, I'll tell you what is written in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are we all right? I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I'm glad my name's written down in heaven. Praise the Lord. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> if you're not saved, you need to get saved. That's right. And if you are saved, if you're saved and you go around with a pooch mouth all the time, That's right. you go around saying, oh, I just don't like myself no more. <laughs> Honey, Somebody ought to smack you upside the head. Good preaching. Yes, sir. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hand to the one you love the best. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad I'm saved. He paid the price. For our redemption. Yes, he did. And that was a mighty costly price. Yes. It was the precious Lamb of God. That taketh away the sin of the world. That had to literally die. In our place. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we ought to have a little bit of joy. Jesus said my joy I leave with you. Thank you. 1 John 1, 4 says, These things I've written unto you that your joy may be full. If you go around with a pooch mouth all the time and a frown on your face, you ain't got no joy. 
well, I'm just not a very excitable person, preacher. I'm going to pray God give you what I got. I'm highly excitable. I have my down times. It's usually between 11 and 5 or 6 when I'm sleeping. But that message I preached this morning, like I was telling y'all, you know, God woke me up Thursday morning at 2.30 in the morning with that scripture on my mind. And you know how when you got something on your mind, but you can't get all the way awake to get up and do something about it? I, I was going to get up, and I said, Lord, I said, I, I need to write this down because I, I'll forget it. Guess what? He wouldn't let me. Amen. I said, he wouldn't let me. See, when he, which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, when God saved your soul, he started a good work in each one of us here tonight that are saved. And he's going to keep doing that. You might go up there and, and bow up in the back a little bit every now and then. You might more get out of sorts every now and then. But he's going to keep plugging away. Right. He's going to keep working. And until you conform into the image of his dear son, you're going to be most miserable. I hate to tell you that. The way of transgressors is hard. But I'll tell you what, if you love him, if you try your best to live for him and to praise his holy name, you'll have the joy of the Lord down deep in your soul. No matter what's going on, you can smile and just say, praise the Lord. I'm his and he's mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand on our feet, have a word of invitation. Our Heavenly Father, we want to praise you tonight for Jesus. And Lord, I know this message.